Hey word nerds! My name is Mickey Reed and I am a freelance copy editor for self-published and independent authors. I'm going to talk about editing today. Okay, so a lot of people ask me how to become an editor, what I did to become an editor, and I kind of think that my case is a little bit unique. Maybe not completely in the book world these days, but when I started, I was just a blogger. So I had developed some relationships with a bunch of different self self-published and independent authors before I decided I wanted to be an editor. So I think maybe that kind of helped me in a way, but it's definitely doable if you're not already in the book world in the way that I was. So I have six pieces of advice for you guys to do to become an editor. Number one, you want to figure out what kind of editing you want to actually do. There are multiple types of editing out there, but you don't have to provide every service that editing has. If you just want to be a proofreader, that's fine. If you want to do content editing, but you don't want to proofread, that's totally okay too. People will hire you depending on what they are looking for. So make sure you find your skill set, hone it, and then work on that. If you don't want to do everything, that is okay. Personally, I don't mind providing all of those editing services because that's what I like to do. But not everybody cares about where commas go and they just want to edit the story. That's totally fine. So make sure you figure out the type of editing that you want to do and stick with that. Number two, you're going to want to figure out how much your time is worth. So this is how much you're going to charge. We do it per page, you can do it per word. I would check out other editors' websites to see what they're charging, to see what the going rates are. Uh, at the beginning, you're probably not going to charge as much just because you haven't been doing this as long as the people who are charging more have been doing it. So figure out how much your time is worth, set some prices, and then go from there. Number three, you're going to want to set up a website. This is going to be the place where you can show everybody what you do, what kind of editing you want to do, how much you're going to charge, as soon as you get testimonials, that's something that you can put up there as well. But telling the world that this is what you want to do is how you're going to get business. If you tell nobody that you want to edit, nobody's going to ask you to edit. So if you let everybody know that this is what you want to do, people are going to come to you. They're going to find your website, hopefully you have your email address on there, and they can contact you about editing. So tell the world, <laughs> which leads me to number four, would be social media accounts. I set up um, Facebook and Twitter for my blog, so I already had those. So when I decided I was going to edit, I just announced it everywhere. I said, hey, you know what? This is something that I'm going to try. I'd set up my website, so I sent a link to my website, and that's how people found out about me. So I would recommend social media accounts to let people know that this is what you're doing. People can keep in contact with you that way, and you can spread the word about openings and dates that you want to fill and all that kind of stuff. So set up social media accounts and spread the word. Number five is networking. So this kind of goes in line with social media, where you talk to people and you go back and forth. But with networking, you want to exchange information, create a group of people that you can refer uh, your clients to, or people who will refer you to their clients. I know as an editor, I get a lot of uh, questions about who to go to for book cover design and for formatting. And so I have a list of people I refer them to. So if you can get on lists like that or, you know, get in a group of people that you trust, really network and put yourself out there, I think that'll help you get clients as well. Last, number six, there are websites out there for freelancers. So you can check out websites like elance.com and the new one, it's called nunabooks.com or writer.ly. In my head, I always say writerly. I don't know if that's how they say it. Uh, but you can check out those websites where people actually go on there and they put their book there, out there. They say, hey, you know what, I have a 100,000 word book, I need copy edited. And you can, I don't know if you bid on them, I actually haven't used them, so maybe I shouldn't <laughs> suggest this as advice. But I've checked them out and they seem pretty cool, so if you can get on there, find some uh, freelance jobs, you never know what you can find. So that's it. I think my overall advice would be to put yourself out there and let people know that this is what you want to do. If nobody knows that this is what you want to do, no one's going to hire you. The way I got out there was one of the author friends that I had made uh, through the blog had actually posted about how she wasn't going to traditionally publish anymore. She wanted to self-publish. And I said, hey, if you need an editor, you might want to give me a try. And she did email me. So if I hadn't put myself out there and she hadn't pushed me to, oh, hello, my dog says hi. If she hadn't pushed me to edit and put a website out there, I might not be here right now giving this video to you guys about how to become an editor. So put yourself out there and you never know what's going to happen. Worst thing that people can say is no, right? 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, I think they'll put all of my stuff down below. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff. Um, thanks to the word, word Nerds for letting me be part of their team today, and I will see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.